The most important knee ligaments to scan for potential injury are the two collateral ligaments at the medial and lateral aspects and the two cruciate ligaments deep in the knee joint. The medial and lateral collateral ligaments are extra-articular structures and as a result can easily be viewed by ultrasound. The two intra-articular ligaments, the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, indwell deeply in the joint and therefore can only be depicted partially. Beginning the examination. The patient is positioned supine on the examination table with his or her knee flexed. Scanning of the knee starts from the patellar tendon, which is used as a landmark in this examination. The tendon is displayed by sonography as an echogenic band with a fibular appearance in longitudinal views. Examining the medial collateral ligament. To examine the medial collateral ligament, the transducer is held in the longitudinal position parallel to the patellar tendon. The transducer is placed on the medial side of the knee. The medial collateral ligament is a two-layer structure. The deep layer is composed of meniscofemoral and meniscotibial ligaments, tightly attached to the medial meniscus. The superficial layer is made up of broad and flat fibrillar connective tissue, running from the medial femoral epicondyle to its tibial attachment. The most common signs of an injured MCL are thickening and swelling of the ligament with heterogeneously hypoechoic change. In cases of severe injury, echogenic foci superficial to the bony cortex of the femur may be noted in the proximal part of the MCL. This particular type of injury is known as a pellegrini stida lesion. Lateral collateral ligament The lateral collateral ligament lies between the apex of the fibula and the lateral femoral epicondyle. This ligament's properties and its oblique orientation make it hypoechoic under ultrasound. Lateral collateral ligament injuries are much rarer than medial collateral ligament injuries. An injured lateral collateral ligament appears under ultrasound as thickened and or uneven, or as a disrupted band. Anterior cruciate ligament Since the anterior cruciate ligament is deeply embedded in the joint, it is impossible to access the entire ligament by ultrasound. The ligament can be partially seen from the anterior side with extreme flexion of the knee, or evaluated by scanning the intercondylar fossa from the back of an extended knee to access the associated hemarthrosis. Evaluation of the tibial portion of the anterior cruciate ligament can be processed from the anterior aspect of an extremely flexed knee. This is done by placing the transducer on the patellar tendon and slightly rotating the proximal part of the transducer toward the medial border of the lateral femoral condyle. Posterior cruciate ligament. Sonographic examination of the posterior cruciate ligament is performed at the popliteal fossa with a patient lying prone with his or her knee fully extended. Ultrasound provides visualization of only its distal half. The average thickness of a normal posterior cruciate ligament is less than 1 cm. An injured posterior cruciate ligament tends to be relatively thicker, and a torn posterior cruciate ligament is usually heterogeneously hypoechoic with an indistinct or wavy posterior margin. Fluid accumulation in or around the knee joint is usually associated with knee ligament injury. Ultrasound-guided aspiration and or injection is very useful in both diagnosis and treatment of the injured knee. The suprapatellar recess is the most convenient site to aspirate a knee effusion.